gamers, I'm sick and tired of manually obtaining blocks like an idiot, so it's time to create four essential automatic farms so that we don't have to manually obtain these items. We also get a bunch of other stuff done along with a new fun segment where I build your guys' ideas towards the end of each episode, starting with this one. Let's get started. Alright, so the basic idea is that I want to make a row or street of sorts with a bunch of factory buildings, with each one containing a farm, and I think a nice spot to make this would be right next to our brand new train station here. So I'm first going to lay down a rough foundation for everything, which means it's time for a lot of excavating and a lot of stone placing. By the way, if you're wondering how I'm getting all of the stone for this, I am, uh, yeah, I'm just stealing it from the mills in our iron farm here. But soon, we won't have to. Okay, I'm gonna go smelt all of this cobblestone and get started on our foundation. Okay, so there's our foundation all done. Uh, well, probably not all done. I might have to expand this. I have, honestly, I have no idea how big I want to make all of these factories. But yeah, so starting off, I think the first one I want to go ahead and make is going to be our stone factory. So we're going to have to make drills and everything that are going to mine cobblestone, and then we're going to smelt it into stone. But yeah, before we can do all of that, of course, we need to actually make the factory itself. So I'm going to, uh, once again, go get some more cobblestone from our iron farm, smelt all of that into some stone to uh, make the the factory. So yeah, let's get started. So first up, to get our positioning right, I placed the rails we'll be needing, and once I started laying out the factory, I of course had to expand further. And then I just dove straight into building. I first raised up our polished andesite pillars here to a decent height, and then started on the walls. For these, I'm using a lot of the copycat steps to add some nice detail and depth to the walls, along with some framed glass for the windows. I'm also using stone and andesite to texture the walls so it looks a little less bland, even though it's sort of meant to be. I mean, it's a 1900s style factory. They weren't meant to look amazing. Okay, and there's our first new factory all added in. Honestly, I'm not too happy with it at the moment. There are some extra details that I feel like it needs. It just looks very kind of plain at the moment. Uh, but yeah, I'll probably add those in uh, over time once I kind of figure out how I want to, you know, add those in. So for now, I want to get started making the actual interior of this and our stone generator. And the first thing, of course, that we need to do is uh, get power to this building. So I'm probably going to just go ahead and link up our existing power from our factory here. And I'll I'll just go underground and link it up to our building because uh, I feel like that's probably just going to be the easiest way. So let's go from this spot right here from our gearbox here and we'll just go underground all the way over to our building. So yeah, just give me a second. Okay, we now have our power hooked up over to our new factory here. The next thing I want to go ahead and do is actually, uh, you know, just smack a door down on this because uh, we were previously wide open to the elements. But yeah, now it is time to set up the interior for this factory. The first thing I want to go ahead and do is add in our floors here. We'll also be adding in our ladder, probably just start uh, right here, might as well. Let's go ahead and start adding in our floors as well. And I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna do all this real quick right now. Okay, there's all of our floors done, including the roof here. Let's head all the way back down to the bottom. So this first floor here, I want to be probably just our storage area. So we're going to make our second floor probably the smelting and, uh, you know, harvesting station. And now it's time to figure out how I want to, uh, you know, actually lay this out. Well, our power is going to be coming up from here. Actually, I feel like we should probably just span this across every floor and have the drills at the uh, third floor. I think that might be the easiest way. Okay, so let's play some temporary blocks. Let's place our drills here. Then we will grab out our belts here. Okay, then I think let's put our belts here. They'll be going this way. And then over on this side, let's have the belt go down to the second floor. Hopefully we're going to be able to power that easily enough. Okay, now let's grab out some blocks so that our lava and crap doesn't get absolutely everywhere. Okay, so if we waterlog these, uh, I need to go get one more water bucket. Give me a second. Like that. And then we'll extend this up one block higher here. And we'll place our lava right here. And there we go. We have all of our stone blocks here, just, uh, you know, removing these temporarily so you can see. And that's basically our cobblestone generator done. Now we just need to get all of these powered. So I think the easiest way is probably going to be with some encased chain drives here. Bang. There we go. That should, uh, hopefully work. I think it will. We're going to bring our power up through these shafts all the way up to this top floor here. Have that come into a vertical a gearbox like so. And then uh, I need to get out of here. Um, uh, and then let's connect those up and bang. We should be able to hear the drills. Hello? They're not drilling. 
Why are they not drilling? Oh, I think it's because the chain drive. Yeah, that might not work. Okay, actually, I have another idea. Give me a second. Give me a second. Yes, they're mining. As you can see, there we go. They're working. Hell yeah. Now, what we need to do is get these belts powered. And then we can branch this off like so and then to another gearbox and just pray that that is going the right way. Yes, it is. Thank God. And yeah, so that's pretty much our cobblestone generator done. Now, let's head down to this floor where, oh my God, all the cobblestone is just pouring out of the ceiling. Now, down here is where we're going to have our smelting set up. So, for this, I I have an encased fan. Actually, we could probably just have this go off into the ground like this. We'll have our fan down at the end here. I need to figure out how to how I want to do this because I want the, uh, you know, only the finished product, only the stone to be going downstairs. So I need to set up some kind of system for that. Okay, my idea is to actually reduce this by what... Okay. Now what we need to do is go get a brass filter. Okay, I'm back with a bunch of extra stuff. So my plan is to have a chest here. Let's remove the block below it for uh, just in the future. We're going to need to put a brass funnel right here. I'm going to set that to be uh, intake. We're also going to utilize the filter on it so that it'll only take in stone. Now let's just encase this area up a little bit more like this. That should be good enough. Now as for the fan here, let's go ahead and place some of our panels like like so. Then inside it, we're going to, of course, place some lava so that we'll be smelting our stone. Okay, and now we just need to get these powered. So yeah, I'm probably just going to uh, route power over this way and uh, yeah, just give me a second. Okay, there's our uh, janky uh, setup done. Now we should be able to uh, connect this back up and our cobblestone should start coming down and it should start smelting into stone. Now we should be able to head downstairs here, add a funnel to this chest here and yes, there we go. There's our stone coming out. Holy crap, that is awesome dude. And yeah, now we just basically have an unlimited supply of just constant stone. But I do want to set up a little bit better of a storage system for this. So let's add a big old vault right here. Let's put another funnel here. This should work, hopefully. Yes, there we go. Okay, so it's just going directly into our vault here. Let's make this maybe that big, I guess. That should store enough stone that we'll probably need. And then finally, I just want to have like a simple little system to, uh, you know, be able to actually access this because uh, obviously we can't get into these. And let's have a funnel here pulling out out. Actually, yeah, we'll move that up one like this. Let's add a belt right here. And then this will be going into a chest like that. Okay. Now we just need to get this belt powered. Okay. And there we go. There's the janky setup all done. So we have our vault here for our like kind of overflow storage. And this chest will be, of course, just steadily filling up with a bunch of stone. And yeah, once it gets full, this belt will stop and our vault here will be backlogged full of stone. And so yeah, that pretty much marks the completion of our first factory, our infinite stone generator factory thing. And so now it is time to move on to our next farm. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to get started building the factory building for that right now. So for this one, I went with a block palette of stone bricks, stone and spruce wood, which I feel always works well together. I also changed up the shape quite a bit from the first factory and made it taller as well. Next, I headed down to my basement to find one of my slaves <coughs> villagers uh, had turned into a zombie. So it's time to fix him. First item, a splash potion of weakness. I made my way to the nether fortress in order to get the blaze rods for the brewing stand and after almost dying uh, multiple times, I had a decent amount and made my way back. I then crafted my brewing stand and set up a nice little area on the second floor to be my brewing station. I then quickly went back to the nether to get a brown mushroom I needed for the fermented spider eye, which I then used to make a weakness potion and then next up I used some gunpowder to make it into a splash potion and it was all done. Next I made a golden apple, easy enough, then made my way back down to the basement, threw the potion on him and fed him the apple and in no time he was back to his normal slave self. However, I noticed his trade was way better, only needing one emerald, which was insane. Next, I wanted to enchant my sword, so I went out into the night to get a few levels, came back and enchanted my sword and got knocked back too, which uh, kinda sucks. I then traded for a couple of enchanted books to put on my sword and axe as well. Okay, and we're back at the factory. I've also just gone ahead and made a couple of changes, like I added these little uh, nodules sticking out here, and I also changed this building. Previously, these were solid blocks. I just changed them to stairs. I feel like they look a little bit nicer. Let's head on inside and get started with our two farms that are actually going to be in this building. So this first floor here is going to be our storage. So we're going to leave this till last. Let's actually go ahead and uh, slap a ladder. I think we'll probably have to put it on here. Okay, and here's our big main area that we're going to be doing, uh, you know, pretty much all of our farming stuff. So our first farm here is going to be our kelp farm, which uh, I just realized I don't have any kelp. Oh my god, dude. Let me, uh, yeah, let me go get some. Okay, I'm now back with a bunch of kelp. I'm going 
going to uh, just quickly make an infinite water source down here because we're going to be needing a lot of water for this. So starting off our kelp farm, we're going to, of course, first going to have to place down our water wheel here. Oh. Okay, that is not how I meant to place it. Like that. Now, let's get a block and place it here. And now, let's make a bit of an enclosure around this as well. Okay, and there we go. Now, we can just go ahead and place our water right here. And our water wheel will be spinning. Next, on top of this, we're going to place our mechanical bearing, like so. So, let's raise this all up by an extra layer, like so. We'll also just go ahead and cover all of this up here. So, now it's time to make an additional uh, ring around this first one that we made here. As this is where all of our kelp is going to be growing and uh, be getting harvested. And now it's time to uh, get this bad boy filled with water, of course. Okay, and there is our filled up uh, tank of water. Uh, I've just realized I probably should have done this afterwards. Let's just hope that this is still going to work. Okay, so we're going to have to create our little contraption here that's going to be harvesting all of our sugar cane. So on this front face here, we're going to be placing something called a mechanical harvester, which is going to be uh, harvesting the kelp as it grows up. Then on top here, we need a storage, of course. So we're placing a chest. And then we're also going to need a portable storage interface. So we're going to place one right here. Oh my god. We're going to place one right here. And then it's going to connect up to another one over yonder. And uh, yeah, that's literally it. Now we just need to uh, glue it together. So now if we right click of this, back. Oh, okay. I thought it didn't work then. But yes, there we go. It is now harvesting. Now all we need to do is just simply plant all of our kelp. Oh my god, that grew super quick. But yeah, there you can see it harvests the kelp. It'll put it into this thing. Uh, obviously, right now we don't have a way to uh, get our stuff out of that. So yeah, we need to set up the storage system next now. All right, so let's head back down to our bottom floor. Down here, we're going to have two separated item vaults. So we're going to have one in this corner here, and then we'll have one over in this corner as well. So this one's going to be for our kelp. We'll just make it that big, I guess. And then this side, is going to be for our other one, which uh, we'll get to in a second, don't worry. So now we need to link up this portable storage unit to this vault. And we're going to do that by using these things, shoots. So let's uh, just place a bunch of these like so. Now all of our kelp will be getting sent directly into this item vault. And uh, of course we need a way to uh, get into the vault and get all of our kelp out. So we're going to set up a simple little system similar to how we did for the lumber mill stuff. Yeah, I think to make this easier, let's actually just extend these out both by one more. Okay, so let's have some funnels like so we're going to remove part of the ground here so that we can add some belts in. Then we're going to need to make some more of those andesite funnels. And I need freaking dried kelp for it. Oh my god. Okay, now let's place our double chests here and here. And then we'll just simply put our funnels like so, connecting those up. There we go. All right, now we just need to get these belts powered. And uh, we're going to hopefully be able to get the water wheel. Yes, there it is. We're just going to bring this power down. And okay, that one isn't going the right way. And it's also very slow. Um, okay, let's just start. We'll just put some gears in between these to speed it up a little bit, just so it isn't, uh, you know, at a freaking snail's pace. Okay, there we go. I've got to figure it out. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a ghetto setup. Uh, just don't worry about it. But uh, yeah, we've got our kelp going into this chest now. Hell yeah, that is awesome. So now we don't have to freaking worry about going all the way over to the ocean and harvesting kelp. Now we can just come to our new factory here and just grab it whenever we need it. Hell yeah. And now because we do have a lot of extra space up here, I want to add in an extra farm, which is going to be our sugar cane farm. So let's start adding in another floor here so that we don't uh, interfere with our existing farm down below. And I'm gonna have to go get more freaking wood slabs, man. Jesus Christ. Okay, so as with our farm below, we're of course gonna need a water wheel here. Then let's surround it with some stone once again. Now, mechanical bearing on top. Uh, honestly, I don't know. Can sugarcane grow on like any block? No, it has to be like dirt. Yeah, it has to be like dirt or sand. That's okay. We'll just, uh, you know, play some dirt. Okay, it might look uh, a little bit whack, but uh, this is the most effective layout that I could uh, find for sugarcane and you know like a pretty small area so now it is time to start making our little harvester machine thing again okay i just realized i actually made this area one block wider than the actual uh, kelp farm down here uh, i'm kind of an idiot so yeah we should be right so let's add our chest and our portable storage uh thing up here we'll also now be able to put our other one right there and then we'll also put our uh harvesters on these blocks here now let's go ahead and actually glue everything together i completely I forgot about that. There we go. Now we can probably just go ahead and turn on our machine. Okay. Uh, whoopsie daisy. Let's glue that one on as well. Okay. Now let's turn it on and there we go. Okay. And now we can just go ahead and plant all of our sugar cane around the place. Uh, I think, yeah, that's as wide as it'll get. So we should be able to place all of these here. Yes. I think that is the area that it can kind of cover, you know? We do need light for these to grow. I'm pretty sure. So let's add maybe some like cross beams across here with some lanterns hanging on them. I think that'll look kind of cool like that. Hopefully that is uh, adequate lighting. Okay. And now the last thing to do 
for this farm is to get our uh, portable storage interface and these chutes all the way down and over to our uh, vault that's on the other side over here. Okay, it does appear to be working now. I don't know why it wasn't working before, but yes, there we go. Our sugarcane is now coming into this chest. Hell yeah, dude. So yeah, that just about completes our second factory here with our second and third farms. We've got our kelp farm and our sugarcane farm now running fully automatically and smoothly. So with that all done, it is now time to move on to our fourth farm and our third factory in total. Let's get started. I decided to completely switch up the block palette for this one, starting with some deep slate pillars. I'm also utilizing the copycat steps and the girder blocks from the create mod to further make this factory a bit more interesting. As for the walls, we're going with textured bricks and granite with some tiled glass panes for the windows. Next, I ventured out to a new cave in hopes of finding dripstone as we need it for the farm in this factory. Thankfully, I quickly found some after some exploring, harvested a bunch of it, and made my way back. Okay, gamers, now it is time to fill up our brand new factory here with our farm. And uh, yeah, I've just gone ahead and pre-prepared absolutely everything we'll need. I mean, I'm sure I've probably forgotten at least like a hundred things. So first up, let's uh, slap our door on, of course. Uh, and I forgot ladders. Oh my god. Give me a second. Uh, I also just realized I completely forgot to do something for the staircase here, which is actually add these blocks like so, and then we're going to add our little copycat steps as well to make it look extra nice. Hell yeah, there we go. That looks awesome, dude. Let's slap our ladder on right here, and I want to add a ceiling on right here because this is uh, going to be used, this area. Alright, so up here is going to be our dripstone lava farm. Actually, I should probably explain what this farm is going to be. I don't think I've said that yet, but yeah, this is going to be our andesite farm. Andesite is used in a lot of stuff in this mod. If you didn't know, as you can see, andesite alloy, it's made with iron nuggets and andesite. So yeah, andesite is a very, very useful farm to have, and I kind of wish I'd made it earlier because the amount of andesite I've mined is just uh, ridiculous. For andesite farms, we need lava. As you can see here, if we click on andesite, you can see here, we need gravel, flint, and lava. So this part here is going to be the lava section, and then everything on this floor here is going to be be the uh, gravel and flint kind of processing. <laughs> So up here, let's go ahead and place in our lava. I only have two buckets at the moment, and I can't really be bothered to go get more. So I'm just going to let this, uh, you know, drip. Wait, does it not need to be a lava source? Because I just saw these other ones dripping. Look at that. Does it not have to be a source on every block? Well, I guess we'll find out. We'll just let that run. And I'm also going to remove these slabs underneath these as well, because we need to connect some fluid pipes to these. Because yeah, to get the lava that we need here, we actually need to connect it up to our basin. So let's grab out our pipes and uh, just start connecting all of these up like so. And uh, we're just going to leave it like that for now. We'll figure it out uh, later on. Because yeah, we need to figure out how we're going to uh, actually set everything up. So first up, let's go ahead and place our drills on it. We're going to need a cobblestone generator for this. And uh, I kind of actually want to get some glass for that. So uh, yeah, it's time for trip number two back to our base. <laughs> let's see how many trips we're going to have to do uh, to our base. God damn it, dude. All right, so let's cover up these blocks and also these like so. Now directly under these drills, we're going to have some belts. Then we're going to grab our three millstones. We're going to be placing those all along here, along with some of these funnels as well. Okay, now let's place our lava. These should be turning to stone. So now when they get mined, they'll get transported across here and straight into our millstones to be turned into gravel. And so now we need some shoots to extract that gravel down. Next, we need some encased fans because I want to actually use two of these gravel export uh, output things to be turned into flint. And then the other one is just going to stay as gravel on the side here. So next, we're going to grab our chest or two of our chests. We're going to place them there like so. And then we're going to also grab out some brass funnels here. We're going to place two like a this. I need to wrench them so they're facing the other way. Oopsie, mother daisy. And I've also just realized I've forgotten my filters. Uh, okay, trip number three. Give me a second. Okay, I'm back with the filters. Uh, let's clear all of these. Something else I've also learned, which is very handy, is you can actually hold down a left click on JEI mod over here and actually just drag it over. You don't even need the physical items. How good is that? So yeah, we're going to set a filter of flint and iron nuggets on the allow list. We're going to tick that bad boy and we're going to place these 
on here. So that means that these will only take in flint and iron nuggets, which is what the gravel will make once it's been washed. Speaking of washed, let's place our water buckets in there as well. So yeah, just a quick recap. We're mining cobble. This is then being turned into gravel. The gravel's being shot down here and then washed into flint and iron nuggets and being put into this chest here. That's where we're up to so far. Okay, now because we don't really have a use for iron nuggets at all for this build, we're going to place another funnel here and we're going to set this to iron nuggets. And I just realized you actually do need the physical items if you want to just place one in there. God damn it. Okay, trip number four, I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm losing my mind, man. Jesus. Okay, I'm back. I've got my iron nugget. I've got my flint. Let's add our funnels on here as well for our flint. Ooh, actually a really cool idea would be to add some like little dumpsters here and we can just throw it up and it gets like incinerated. That'd be pretty cool. We should actually do that. Okay, so we've got our little boy belt here and I want this to go into our basin and our mechanical press. And now this side here is where we're going to be adding another funnel. And this is where our gravel's going to come in along this belt and be picked up here. And so yeah, that's um, that's honestly almost all of the setup done now. The last thing we need is another brass funnel here for the bottom. I uh, actually need to remove that. And we need to set that to andesite. Oh my god. What is this? Trip number five? Actually, I don't even think I have any left. I don't think anyone's going to notice. Yoink. Bang. Uh, yeah. The... <laughs> Don't worry about it. Okay, andesite, bang, there we go. Let's see if our dripstone has been dripilating. Okay, so we do have one filled up here, but that is one of the sources. Okay, let's just leave them going a little bit longer because we do still have some other stuff to do. But yeah, that is almost all of the uh, setup done. We actually need to now connect our pipes up to our basin here. We'll just go the path of least resistance. Just come up like this. And uh, we do actually need something called a mechanical pump for this. So there we go, there's our pump. We need to, of course, pump that pump that. We need to power that with a uh, cog wheel like that. And yeah, so that's pretty much all of the setup done. We do need to link up our uh, storage thing. I need to actually go make item vaults because I've run out of those. But yeah, this should honestly be working now. We just need to actually go ahead and power everything. Because we do have a lot of machinery here, I'm going to make this building have its own kind of separated power system. You know, previously I had linked up our power from here over to these other ones. But yeah, this one's going to use probably quite a bit more power than those other ones. So we're just going to to, uh, build a little bit of a water turbine system underground. So I'm going to have to excavate a uh, probably a pretty massive area down here. So give me a second and uh, I'll probably be back once everything's just been added in. Okay, there we go. There's everything set up. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a mess. Um, basically, we got water wheels on the left, water wheels on the right. It's connected up. Gear ratio. Oh my, actually, I just remembered. There's a freaking, what is it? It's a speed controller. Someone said it in the comments. This thing, dude, I, now that I know how this works, this is actually pretty easy to to make. So uh, yeah, I should have made that, but oh well, we've already done this. It's fine. Yeah, so I've made this go all the way up to our floor here. And uh, yeah, basically now we're just going to connect this up to everything. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to bore you guys with powering everything. So yeah, we're going to get all of this done uh, right now. Okay, and there we go. That's everything powered except for our drills here. I just uh, left these till last so that we can experience the machine starting up together. Hell yeah, there we go. So our drills are mining our stone. The gravel's getting sent over here into our basin and then we also have our gravel being sent down here and being washed into iron nuggets and flint and then once that's done it's being sent into our uh, basin over here gravel flint lava why isn't this working oh no what have i done what have i done oh wait no this isn't powered that's why okay jesus dude i started freaking out for a second there there we go okay now it's getting pressed into andesite hell yes dude how good is that i'm gonna go make some item vaults and uh set up the bottom floor here i'll probably just do this as a time lapse because it's basically just gonna be the same thing as the previous two. So uh, yeah, uh, let's get started. All right, and there we go. There's the storage all done for our new andesite farm. So we have our andesite now coming out into this chest so we can actually view it. So yeah, that just about concludes our last farm and our third factory building here. Now it's time to do all of the fun stuff, which is uh, adding details to everything here. Starting with uh, maybe a dumpster design over here in the alleyways. I did say this before in the episode and I think it would be a pretty cool idea. So let's maybe add one here. And I would like to use these uh, copycat panels and these copycat steps as well to make 
this look extra nice. Then we'll maybe add like a rim with these. And then to fill these blocks in, I think granite might work well for the body. And then we'll have these polished andesite blocks for the, uh, you know, the trim or whatever, I guess. Uh, I don't know dumpster anatomy that well. So uh, yeah. Now I want to make this sort of like a lid. So let's maybe have one side closed and then we'll have one side open. And we'll do that with another panel here. Yeah, I think that looks pretty cool. Uh, I mean, vaguely like a dumpster, I guess. Now in here, a nice little feature would be to remove some of this. We'll have our lava in here, of course, but instead of just, uh, you know, just throwing items into that, I think it'd be uh, extra cool to put a chute here so that our items are, you know, guaranteed dead. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it, okay? <laughs> but yeah, there we go. There's our first little detail, a nice little dumpster design added in here. Now I think another one probably in this alleyway as well would do nicely. So let's just uh, quickly add another one in here. Okay, and there we go. There's our second dumpster dumpster added in. So yeah, now whenever we want to just get rid of some items, maybe I want 62 cobblestone. We'll just go ahead and just, uh, you know, throw it into the dumpster and it's gone. Now, an extra detail I'd like to add is maybe like an actual pathway here because right now our pathway is uh, literally just made of the same blocks as the rest of the foundation. And I think a defined pathway would definitely look nice. I think these two blocks should work pretty well for a, uh, a bit of a, like a, a more subtle kind of pathway because it is going to blend in with our stone blocks here. So yeah, I'll probably just do this as a real quick time lapse uh, right now. Okay, now with our pathway, uh, well, sort of added in. I haven't actually done it over here. I plan on, uh, you know, extending this all the way down to our uh, existing dirt path over there. But I'll, uh, I'll get to that eventually because I actually have something uh, pretty cool that I want to add in now, which is going to be some display boards. Uh, so I'm going to have to grab some dirt for some goddamn scaffolding. Uh, I need to remove this anyway, so might as well just grab it from here. Okay, so yeah, in front of each of these buildings, I want to add a display board that's going to display uh, how much resources we have inside of our item vaults. So first up, let's add our boards on here for our first building, of course. Okay, and next we need to add something called a threshold switch onto our item vault here. And oh my God, this is actually completely full already. Jesus. Yeah, so let's add this on. We'll just add it uh, over here. Yeah, so this little thing is kind of like a meter. Like if it was empty, it would be all the way down here. If it was half full, it'd be there. Right now it's full, so yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, and next, what we're gonna use now is a display link. So we're going to link a this display up over to this thing. And yeah, there we go. Successfully bound to targeted position. And now if we head out here, we should be able to see nothing because uh, I haven't actually powered it yet. Uh, but before we do that, I actually want to make a clipboard. Okay, we need andesite alloy, paper, oak planks. Uh, give me a second, I'm gonna go make this. Okay, I'm back with the clipboard and uh, what this is going to allow us to do is actually set some text on the uh, screen here. So I'm going to right click this and we're just gonna type out, uh, I don't know. Let's just go with capacity. I think that's good. And now if we right click at the top of our uh, sign here, it's not gonna work. Probably because this doesn't actually have power. Let me remove this first just because I don't know if it's going to work with that. But yeah, we need to actually get it powered. As you can see, it's got little cogs here. So we're probably just going to go through here. Oh, conveniently, there is a freaking thing right there as well. That is perfect, dude. Let's grab a gearbox, put it right there. And then we'll go with a single shaft and a cogwheel. And there we go. Our screen now has power. Let's get our clipboard, right click the top. And there we go. We have capacity here. Actually, we, we could probably uh, make it say like, let's go with stone capacity. Now that should override it. There we go. And now we can relink our sign with one of these. Right click that and then we'll place it on this thing. And now if we head back outside, we should see... Okay. I know we need to configure it, but I thought it would just kind of work off the get-go. Okay, we need to actually set this. We're going to set it to line three. And I want to set it to progress bar because I think that looks the coolest. Let's click the tick. And now, yes, there we go. We have a little progress bar of how full our uh, stone storage is now. So if I were to say, uh, you know, just throw a bunch of these on the ground, uh, it'd probably actually take quite a while for this to work. What the hell? It's just completely stopped. I'm not sure why it's not refilling up this chest again. Oh my god, dude. Jesus Christ. You little cretin. Get the hell out of here. Okay, I'm just gonna remove this thing to see if it fixes it. Oh, it did. Okay, so for some reason, that switch, I think, is what was uh, stopping that. Yeah. Oh, I think because it, maybe it actually emits a redstone signal, and I think it's stopping that. Let's try putting it over here instead. Yeah, there we go. So I think when this gets a redstone signal, it might actually stop it. I think that's why. Um, we're just gonna say that's why. <laughs> Alright, now let's relink this. And yeah, so if we ever dip it below the uh, stone capacity, 
activity, you know, this will show where we're at. Uh, I doubt we're ever going to go below 100% because uh, this is a lot of stone. But yeah, there we go. We now have a nice little display sign on the front of our building to show how much stone we have. And yes, yeah, so I'm going to do the same thing for this building and this building here. So yeah, just give me a second. I'll get that done right now. All right, and there we go. There's all of our signs done. Uh, obviously, these ones are not going to, uh, you know, have anything on them because it's going to take quite a while for even just these chests to actually fill up. But as you can see, they are filling up quite nicely. But yeah, once they backlog into the item vaults, then we'll actually be able to see the capacity. It kind of sucks. I wish we could combine the item vault and the chest storage into this thing, but I don't believe you can. Oh, well, that'll do for now. It's just a nice little extra detail I thought I'd add. I, yeah, it's kind of cool. All right, and so the next detail I want to go ahead and add is make a, uh, maybe a little bit of a safety kind of setup here for the rails, because right now, uh, you know, if we have a train coming through here, we are very close to death. So I actually kind of want to remove these just so uh, we have a bit more room here. And then I want to add like a little bit of a safety railing all the way across here. And I'm going to be filling these up with some stone bricks just because uh, I feel that looks pretty nice. Yeah, dude, that looks awesome. Hell yeah. So I'm probably going to extend this around here as well. I don't exactly know how I'm going to do these corners, but uh, I'll figure it out. And yeah, I'll link it all the way up to probably our train station platform right here. So yeah, give me a second. I'll get this done right now. Okay, and there we go. There's our little safety railing all done. I also went ahead and just added in a nice little lamppost design. I feel it makes it look a bit more like a street, like, you know, a uh, 1900s kind of style street. The next thing I want to go ahead and do is just add some details, uh, you know, some just some more details outside all of these buildings. So first I'm going to head in here and just grab some stone. I also want to get some cobblestone. And I just want to add some like stone and cobblestone piles for, you know, this building. So maybe let's add one over here. I also want to add some rails kind of, uh, you know, supporting it, I guess. Although it does look a little weird. Actually, I think a, uh, a really nice addition. Give me a second. <laughs> one of these right here. Yes, that actually looks kind of cool. I mean, it doesn't match exactly, but, uh, it's better than a giant rail just sticking out there. And now I think I want to add one maybe out the front. I'm not exactly sure where. Let's maybe remove this part of the stuff here and we'll probably just uh, make it maybe in this corner. Yeah, just something like that. That looks super nice. That's a nice extra little detail and it kind of signifies, you know, this is a uh, stone factory. For this next factory, I have some dried kelp blocks and I think a nice spot would be just right here in this alleyway. Let's just place a couple of them like so. Let's have our rail once again going up across here and our ladder there. Hell yeah, that's sick. And now for our final one. Obviously, this one's our andesite factory. So let's add some andesite piles outside here. Yes, that is awesome, dude. Hell yeah. And now just for some finishing touches, I do have some chests, some barrels, and some campfires. Of course, the mighty trio here. And so out the front of some of these buildings, let's just add some little simple details like these. Maybe some lanterns on top of those as well. All right, and hell yeah, that is looking awesome, dude. Our nice little uh, mini city is uh, underway. We've got three of our buildings done so far. Of course, when I do get more farm ideas, I do want to extend them to the right and maybe even back behind these as well and turn this into a little mini, you know, 1900 style industrial city or something like that. The next detail that I almost completely forgot about is actually something pretty cool. I want to add some like fire escape kind of things, I guess. So my idea is to have some copycat panels here with some andesite ladders on those. And then I want to make this into like a bit of a platform here. And uh, I don't exactly know how I'm going to do like a staircase for this. <laughs> it's annoying because there's no slabs for these copycat things. That'd be so good. I can't actually connect this up, man. Oh, all right. I tried my hardest. It, it was, uh, yeah, it was not easy to set this up. We also still have this weird gap here, but, um, yeah, we're just not going to talk about it. But yeah, we now have a nice little, uh, fire escape entrance to our, uh, building here. But uh, yeah, kind of cool, I guess. It's just meant to be a nice little aesthetic detail. So we're nearing the end of this episode, which means it's time for the new segment that I'll be calling, uh, your fun and weird ideas that I'll build at the end of the episode. Rolls off the tongue, I know. I'll be taking some of the best ideas you gave in the comments of the previous episode and do them in the next one, starting with this episode. So the first comment says, please name the piglin with a name tag of Frank. That would be epic, lol. It would be definitely pretty epic. So yeah, let's go give this guy a name tag. All right, Frank, where are you? Come here, mate. Bang, there we go. Frank is now officially our factory supervisor. Hell yeah. The next comment says to make Frank an office. And I actually really love that idea. So Frank, where do you want your office to be? Oh, he wants it to be up up here, okay. Let's follow Frank. Where is he going? Off into this corner, you reckon? I think that's a pretty cool spot. All right, well, let's extend our little panels here to, uh, you know, account for a little bit of an office space. 
Oh my god, Frank, be careful, dude. You're supposed to be the supervisor. What the hell? And yeah, let's just add some panels here to make some walls. So we can't really do that. Okay, never mind. We're not going to be able to use panels for the walls. Uh, let me actually maybe use some stone instead. Uh, now, that's actually going to be blocking off the window. Let's change that. Let's make it one block wider. Okay, and then we'll just add a roof on with these copycat panels. I think that'll look nice, even though we're probably never going to be able to see it. And uh, we also, of course, need some windows. All right, let's add our windows in with some tiled glass panes. Definitely looks super nice. Let's also add some andesite doors on here so that he has a, uh, you know, an entry and exit to his office. And now let's, of course, add in some uh, details. So let's add some brass casing around here as a sort of like control panel, I guess. And on here, let's just put on some, uh, I don't know, some buttons and some levers. I think that'll look cool. Hell yeah. So it kind of looks like he has like a bit of a control panel up here in his office. And hell yeah, this was such an awesome idea. Frank loves his office. Look at him. He's bouncing up and down. He hasn't even been inside it yet. But um, yeah, that was a sick idea, dude. All right. And the next next idea you guys gave is to actually put a chute on top of our crushing wheels here to make life a little bit easier. Oh my god, that trap door just got eviscerated. Jesus. So let's place a temporary block here so we can place our chute right there. And then on top of that, let's place in a chest. That way when we put items in here, they'll automatically just get sucked out and put straight through the crushing wheel and then down to the bottom. Okay, I don't know what's happening to the stuff. I guess you just can't crush stone or something. <laughs> Another cool idea that, uh, I mean, I just came up with myself. You guys might have said it in the comments, but uh, yeah. We're also going to put a depot under here so that our items don't just drop on the ground. They're actually going into a, uh, you know, a depot here. So yeah, there we go. There's our new crushing wheel setup. Uh, it does look oddly phallic. Um, just don't worry about that. Okay, and the final idea was to name our horse, which I completely forgot to do in the last episode. And the name I liked the most was Willow. So this guy's new name is Willow. I unfortunately ran out of name tags. Uh, I used the last one on Frank here. So once I do get another name tag, I will of course be putting this right onto Willow here. So yeah, thank you for that name. That is awesome, dude. Okay. Okay, and so that just about does it for this episode. Once again, if you want to download these three factories that I built in this episode, along with any other build that I've created in this series, be sure to check out my Patreon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.